In his inauguration speech, former President Nelson Mandela promised to build a society where all its people could walk tall without any fear in their hearts. A rainbow nation that is at peace with itself and the rest of the world. But 26 years later, this promise seems unfulfilled. And in the past few months, there's been frightening and dramatic increase in gender-based violence and LGBTQIA plus hate crimes. So we're back yes. and um, this episode is, is going to be quite a heavy one. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking about gender-based violence and uh, hate crimes of the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, we have Nazli here as our guest. Um, Nazli, can you please Welcome. tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm Nazli Sharif and I'm here today representing Safe Spaces NPC. Um, but I also serve as a member of parliament um, and I sit on the portfolio for women, youth and persons with disabilities. Mm. I was elected wow. last year. Well um, done. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been an exciting journey, but very frustrating. But I think we'll get into, mm. into those topics um, a little bit, you know, being young, mm. being a woman of color, yeah. um, in a space that has predominantly been male, um, has had its challenges. I've experienced, I'm not sure if you guys have seen my speech, but I spoke about some of the violence I've experienced mm. in parliament right. um, sure. with men. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's been an interesting journey, but we're here for a reason. Yes, mm, we and are. and we're here to fight for those who don't have a voice. Absolutely. And I'm very blessed and privileged to be able to serve my country mm. Mm. and my constituents. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, on this platform. Um, I want to take it back a few years. So, in 2014, government launched the National Intervention Strategy for LGBT, Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, Transgender, and Intersex section. Um, which predominantly focused on and highlighted the issues that we were facing in the country with regards to LGBT hate crimes, corrective rape, GBV. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's six years on and GBV and LGBT hate crimes is at its peak. Mm -hmm. Why does it feel like there's not being enough done from government side? Because there isn't mm -hmm. enough being done from government side. Um, it's one thing to have an intervention. It's one thing to have a strategy. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have a policy. It's another thing to implement it yes. on the ground. And with implementation means budget, mm. it means resources, it means staff capacity. Mm. And oftentimes government is so bloated that people in those offices are doing nothing. Mm. So I'll give mm. an example. I sit with women, youth and persons with disabilities. Their mandate is supposed to be representing gender, mm -hmm. women, members of the LGBT community, young people yeah. and people with disabilities of all, all types of people. Um, and what they do is they are a mouthpiece of government. So they come to our committee and they speak about things like um, this is what we've done. We've had we've met our target because we had one public participation. Mm. And I'm like, wow. and they had last year when I just became an MP, they had a LGBT roundtable. And I went there and the activists said, we always come here. It's mm. always the same thing. We come, we tell you what our issues are. In fact, we give you solutions and then nothing happens. Mm -hmm. And then next year, 16 days of activism, you'll call us back mm -hmm. to tell us what. You don't even give us an update of the work you've done. So I do feel um, that government does not, if you feel it doesn't mm -hmm. take it seriously, believe it. Yeah. Because they don't. Mm -hmm. As somebody who sits on those benches, when we speak about the LGBT community, some people can't even pronounce the acronyms. Mm -hmm. You know, some people, uh, we had a youth parliament and um, one of the guests corrected the, their pronouns and they were like, please call me they or them. Right. And the MPs in the room who are older, and I'm not ageist, I'm not mm -hmm. ageist, um, they laughed. They laughed because they were like, oh, ha, 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 we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And I got really upset because if you don't understand, educate yourself. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, oh. But I mean, there are in positions oh, where they are supposed to exercise mm -hmm you know, these things, and it feels like they're just blatantly ignoring it and being arrogant and ignorant. And we are a representation of this country, yeah. and we are a part of the country. Absolutely. So are you, are you basically telling me that they're doing all these things just for a tick in a box? Absolutely. And, and, I, and I say this without fear or favor. Mm -hmm. Yes. I say this without fear or favor because I'm there, mm -hmm. and yeah. I see. So mm -hmm. when they come to our committee, and they speak about gender-based violence. We have to ask them, what about the LGBT community? Mm -hmm. What are you doing to make their lives easier? What are you doing about trans, the trans community getting their IDs at home affairs? Mm -hmm. Or getting um, uh, hormone injections at an affordable price, 
um, or going to report a correct corrective rape at the police station mm. and the police taking you seriously. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. This is government's responsibility. But can I also say, just on that matter of, of transgender, there's only one facility in South Africa that does transgender reassignment surgery, and that is Krutuski mm -hmm. Hospital in Cape Town. Yeah. But the waiting list is 27 yes, years. Yes, yes that's right. And, it, it, and they only do four surgeries a year. And I mean, like, how is that progressive? Mm. Like, how, how? 2020. How? Yeah. But then I just want to take it back as well, back to the LGBT mm -hmm. community. So there's been, you can't open a newspaper or turn on the news mm. and see of someone that has been a victim of this. Mm. I mean, for instance, Kervin Fortein, Zwelin Korsi Zulu, Smaga mm. Yazi, um, just to name a few, but I mean, there's a lot out there. But it's not really being highlighted in the mainstream media. Mm. But we should be talking about this. Yeah. In fact, I would argue that it's not highlighted in government as well. Sure. Um, you know, when we, when, when, when we have debates around gender-based violence, when we have um, roundtables around um, hate crimes, and you know, to be honest, gender, for me, the LGBT community fall within gender-based violence. Mm. It's not something separate. Mm. It's something all of us. You know, have to have to deal with it. So when we speak about GBV, we're speaking about all types mm -hmm. of gender-based violence, and not only domestic violence yes. or femicide. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and so when we speak about this in all our different spaces, especially at a national government level, we have to speak about what are some of the solutions mm -hmm. that we can come up with. And oftentimes, you find these solutions in civil organisations, in the NGO space, in you know spaces outside of government that yes. work with government. And the thing is, it's not really their responsibility to take on this task. I mean, they're doing it because they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, they're also giving solutions exactly. to the government. Exactly. Exactly. But they're giving solutions to the government, but, but the government is not taking it. Yes, but are they following through? I, I would argue no. Mm -hmm. Sure. But Nasli, uh, another question. Um, you know, black lesbians and uh, trans individuals, mm -hmm. um, they're basically being right? yeah, um, yeah, and highly targeted in hate yes. crimes. What is being done and what can be done? So, we as a country, and, and I'm going to say this, I support the National Strategic Plan. Mm. Because the National Strategic Plan is a plan com that comes from civil organizations. Um, so it's the plan to fight against gender-based violence and femicide. Um, and in that plan, you know, because it came from the, the social sectors, mm. you know, it has solutions. So one of them is to train police officers. Mm. Yes. Okay, so not only SAPS, but also Metro police officers. Mm. Yes. Because sometimes the Metro will stop you and they'll harass you mm. on the road. So that needs to happen. And we've been saying, guys, we've been saying just train your police officers, mm. train them, take them to sensitization training. Mm. In fact, create jobs, give it to the NGO sector. Mm. Yes. That's what we say. Let the NGO sector train these police officers, nurses, teachers, um, advocates, um, mm. people in the courts, because remember the justice system is also failing mm. us. So not only are we being failed on a government level, but we're being failed on a justice level, because mm. in South Africa we have a separation of power. Mm. We have the justice and then we have uh, the government. Um, what about, you know, looking at hospitals, you know, looking at nurses? The, I, the, the thing you said about Hrithisphere, that's a problem. Mm. Why isn't maybe a hospital in Gauteng doing it? Or a hospital in Eastern Cape? At least yes. the big provinces yeah. have access. And access, Tina, is one of the most important things that we have, that we should have as anybody in mm. any country because when we have access to information, we have access to education, mm -hmm. we have access to healthcare, mm. we have access to safety, then maybe we'll start mm. seeing the change in this country. Oh, but Tina, <laughs> let me tell you, mm. if we don't start changing the mindsets of people around us, it's never going to change. Nothing's going to happen because we keep perpetuating the same thing. Mm. You and two of your colleagues created an online platform called Safe Space RSA. Yes. Please tell me a bit about that. So, we are in government. So, uh, my colleagues are councillors in the city of Johannesburg and I'm in parliament. And we work in the gender-based violence, um, in, the, in the woman, the gender mm. space, mm. for a very long time. I've been in politics for 11 years now. I know I still look... And... When I was elected in 2014, I was elected, I was 24 years old as a first-time councillor, but in 2016, um, I was elected as the chairperson 
for gender, youth, and persons with disabilities. And it was in this role that you know we started really seeing some of the issues and realizing that government um, has, you know, its limits. Mm -hmm. Government has its limits. Government can do some mm -hmm. stuff, but they're not going to do a lot of the other mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So we decided um, last year that, you know, maybe we should do something ourselves. Yes. And so we put together Safe Spaces. So Safe Spaces is basically about reclaiming our spaces back. So we have Chalk It Up events, mm -hmm. and I'll invite you guys to the next one. Yes. It's so much fun. So what we do is we, we, we find spaces that are notoriously dangerous for mm. women in the LGBT community. So we'll go to a taxi rank or we'll go to, we went to the Oriental Plaza. But this is not just event. limited to women in the LGBT no, no, community, it's, it's, it's everybody. everybody. We need everybody, mm. Sinead. It can't be a group of us fighting yeah. for something. Mm. We're going to walk straight into the wall. We need allies and we need people to come on board and work with us. So, yes. so this is for everybody. Okay. Um, and so what we do is we go into these spaces and we take chalk and we write messages of hope. We write stories of, 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 of crimes that have been committed. Sure. Um, and in the area. In the area. Okay. And it looks so cool mm -hmm. because when you walk past it, you know, you just see all these these words and these beautiful I mean, messages. it's cool, but it's also heartbreaking. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes I mean, to see course. all these Absolutely. crimes that have happened there. Absolutely. But the awareness it brings mm. because yes. normal people walk past what are you guys doing mm. can we write a message mm. um and you know we always encourage come in, you know because the truth of the matter is yaku everybody you know i know everybody knows somebody who has been a victim Absolutely. Yes. if not yourself mm. and so we all have to play that role so that's the talking up events and we do it as a way to get information out there and, yes. and, 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 you know. And create awareness in the area as well. Mm -hmm. Identifying the spots, exactly. so almost calling it to shame, mm -hmm. you know. Bring it to light, this happened here, mm -hmm. you know. So take responsibility of what happened here and we as people now can be educated. Mm -hmm. And more aware of And but more aware that when I walk in this space, be aware. What this does, is not a safe space. What does government do with those spaces? So they know about the space, what do they... So a lot of these spaces are I wouldn't say they're government spaces, yeah. right? So it would be a restaurant, for example. It would be a bar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be a, a church. Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be any space you can think of. Any space, okay. Even your lounge mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is a space yeah. where abuse happens. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so we take those spaces and we reclaim them. So it's not necessarily public spaces like a park. It can or, be any space. It can be any yeah. space. Okay. It can be any space. <laughs> and, and we say we are reclaiming it because it's ours. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have every right to be here, and we're not going to allow anybody to tell us otherwise. Mm -hmm. So on our website, uh, please visit our website, Safe Space RSA, um, and on the website is a map. And so say, for example, I go to a restaurant, and I was um, harassed, or I was shown violence. And when I speak violence, I don't speak physical violence. Mm -hmm. Violence is a manifestation comes in of many different forms. types of things. Yes. You get emotional violence, mm -hmm. you get verbal violence, yes. you know, you get looked at mm -hmm. in a violent mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. You go onto the website and you tag the space. You tag it. And you say, I have been um, harassed here. Yes. And so when I want to go to Sinead's bar, um, I look Which I don't own. Just put it out. As an example. But if you did, but if did I did. <laughs> Um, and then I would look at the space and say, okay, I want to go to this place and check it out. And I'd be like, oh, there was an incident here. Yes. I'd rather not go to go there. What that does is it gives responsibility to the owner of the establishment yes. to ensure that it's safe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But can I just add on that with regards to safe spaces? There's very few safe spaces for LGBT people in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And even when it, when it is an LGBT space, it's we have true. heterosexual people coming into our spaces, yes. forcing us to retract yeah. and not be ourselves yes. but we can't go to heterosexual spaces <laughs> and because we and be, be ourselves, ourselves yeah. because then the, yeah. a hate crime is bound to happen yeah. mm. so we need to change that narrative and again like you say we need to claim our spaces back we need to stand up for ourselves we need to be like this is our space this is where i feel comfortable yes. and you need to respect that absolutely yeah. But we can't do it alone. No. no, no. This is what it's all about at the end of the day. It's about understanding, okay, if the, if the government is going to fail us, that's okay. And here you are taking the initiative now and saying, 
Okay, we will then do what we have to do to highlight the areas. Now, the movement continues that now it takes us to join you on your event and come and also write notes yeah. for it on the chalking board yeah. so that everyone else present can also... So I think at the end of the day, it really is like when Sinead started the show, the ripple effect, mm. you know, that this is a movement. Mm. That the reason why we are doing these things is because in this country, we are not safe. We are not mm. prioritized. Mm. Yes. Mm. I mean, you hear about... Um, farm murders and you hear about Black Lives Matter and those are all valid movements and questions and topics that need to be addressed but the LGBT community is always thrown on the back end. Mm. We hardly ever get recognized especially in higher government you know institutions. I mean we have parliament laughing at people pronouncing mm. or yeah. having to be addressed yeah. as a them or a, a, you like know, sorry and what? it starts at the top it starts at the top if you if you at the top don't believe it mm -hmm. you're your people working under you, it's not going to fall through. It's the power. Here's a thought. Um, I was speaking to a young lady who was sharing a tweet that um, she had read. And um, it actually broke me. And I shared it with my mother as well. And the tweet said, um, imagine, that, and this is to do with gender-based mm. violence, um, imagine that all men had a curfew at 9.30 and women were allowed to do anything. I read that. At that time, like after mm. that time. Mm. Um, and the comments were heartbreaking. Some of them would go for a walk. Just go for a walk. Mm. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And that you see, is that the is, country it's a we basic live in. thing. Yeah. That's like a bit not that's not even a human right. That is just a thing mm. that you should be able to do without the fear of being attacked or being, you know, a victim or anything. Just going for a walk. Oh, yeah. mm. And I mean that brings questions of why is our society so violent? Mm. Right? Because if we're going to deal with the symptoms of violence. Mm. We have to understand where it's come from. Cool. Mm. And honestly, you know, being in this field for such a long time, it's such a complex issue because why we are so violent, you know, it, 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 I do believe in generational trauma. Mm. I do mm. believe in it. And I do believe that it's in our DNA and we as individuals have to start making different choices. Mm. That was why we have to break, break the cycle. We have, we have to break this generational cycles. We have to break mental cycles. I mean, this is what we have. I mean, I'm from a colored community in Port Elizabeth. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to break many cycles to become this Jody that I am today. It takes work. It's an individual decision and a choice that you have to make every single day. But we have to. As individuals, we also can't be depending on government. We make a change. Yes. I mean, someone else make. Can you take action? You know? It starts with you, you know, we can have how many systems in place that says this is where the men must come to and we're mm. going to break out, we're going to challenge, change them. And what the, what's yeah. that going to help if we are not a little the person change themselves, you know? And so oftentimes, really passionate sure. about it. Sorry, it happens answer. with the conversation. Yes. Mm. Mm. Happens with the conversation. I can be sitting with somebody who has their own views on LGBT. And I can sit with them and be like, okay, let me hear what you're saying. Yes. Okay, cool. This is what I'm saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, oh, you actually make sense. Because once we start speaking reason yes. and logic, guys, equality is not something that's far away. Mm. And, and just another thought is what are people saying when we're not in the room? When LGBTQI plus members are not in the room, when women are not in the room, are those conversations still being had? That's a very interesting question. Mm. I can't answer it for you because when I'm in the room, those conversations are always happening, yes. um, even if it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have these conversations with my grandparents, I have these conversations with my parents mm -hmm. uh, because it's our responsibility mm -hmm. to start breaking these cycles. Yes. But people should take it also upon themselves when they're in those rooms and somebody is bad mouthing LGBT or making inappropriate comments or jokes to stand up to those people because that is where the change mm. starts. But Ooh, ultimately, ultimately long-term change will start at base level, which is education. Mm. So what is the integration that Safe Spaces has with like schools and education systems? Do you, do you go to schools and do you teach children from, from a young age yes. um, this is the way you should act towards certain people? No, we don't. Not Safe Spaces. Oh. Um, safe Spaces is, uh, we have the tools on the website. Mm. So if you want to know what the legislation is, if you want to know about the National Strategic Plan, if you want to know how to get a, uh, a restraining order, if you want to know how to report the domestic violence, we have all of that information online. But 
it's very important mm. to have collaborative efforts, mm. especially on the government level. Mm. So, for example, the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities, with the Department of Social Development, with the Department of Education, yes. has to work collaboratively mm. to educate but do young they? people. Yeah. Um, so, do they? I can't say. Um, I haven't done enough research into it. Mm -hmm. um, but is it enough? No. no. But why do, why, why do you have to have one department working with another department, working with another department? That just puts so much red tape to get something on the ground. If you look at it in our scenario, mm. but the way it should be, there shouldn't be enough red tape. We have mm. to be collaborative. Mm -hmm. um, we can't do something without collaborating with other people. Mm. Uh, we won't get anywhere. So for example, if we, so, so I've, been, I've been saying we need better mental health facilities in schools mm. and I've been advocating for that. So that would mean health would need to work with Department of Education to mm. ensure that there's psychologists, mm. there's social workers at the schools. Absolutely. So it has to Makes be a collaborative sense. effort. And yes, there is too much red tape. Mm. But us as young people, we need to start being more participated mm. in the processes of politics so that we can start taking those places. Yeah. So so what, what would happen if, just a quick question, but what would happen if someone marks a school as not a safe space? Well, then we'll go to that school, we'll deal with the situations, you know, because I suppose we have those connections in, mm. Mm. Um, you know, I, I, I sit with the Minister of Education, I yes. sit with the Minister of Health, we're able to have communications and you know, we do have communication. Mm -hmm. We are able to have conversations. And that's something that's very good about our government mm. system. Like, yes, democracy has its own issues, mm. but we are able to speak to one another yeah, as yes. human beings. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I can pull my hair out because, <laughs> then, you know, uh, we as young people, we have different perspectives because mm -hmm. yeah. we grew up in a different generation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I, I went to the first school that was multiracial. Mm. You know, so I was part of the first cohort mm. um, that had a multiracial school. So our experiences is very mm. different to those who has come before us. Mm. And they've done a great job. And thank you very much yeah. for all the job you've done. Mm. But at the end of the day, if we haven't seen change, yeah, have you, they haven't yeah. done that job. Yeah. Exactly. And let me tell you something. If I, 20 years from now, if I haven't made a change, I've failed mm. in my job. Mm. If I haven't made it easier for the person who comes after me, yes. Who, that person doesn't have to fight mm. the same battles I have to fight, then I mm. fell. Mm. Because I'm fighting the same battles those women mm. who, f who were fighting, we're still fighting yeah. it. Mm. Mm. Yes. And I'm not saying they fell today, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> On that note, I just want to say thank you so much for coming to yes. WQMD. You thank have you. shared a wealth of knowledge wow. with us. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think it's really something that our, our viewers will resonate with. Mm. And what I'm taking from this is that it's never enough. Mm -hmm. You'll never reach a point where you're doing enough. You need to do more. Mm -hmm. We need to stand up. We need to speak out. We need to, as society on the ground level, mm -hmm. create safe spaces for, for women, for mm -hmm. LGBTQA plus individuals. It starts with ourselves. It starts with ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the only way we're going to break that generational cycle. Mm -hmm. yes. We are the generation that needs to make the change. But then there needs to be repercussions. When you report a case, there needs to be repercussions to that person mm. so that, they, so that it, it's long term. Yes, that's yeah. where the justice system And I just wanted to let you guys know, and I would urge your viewers, uh, there is legislation that is out for public comment. Yeah. Okay. Um, please go have a look at it yeah. and comment. Yes. yes. Com oftentimes people don't comment on legislation mm. and so it's just passed. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes these people writing legislation don't have the lived experiences you have. Mm -hmm. yes. So please comment, um, you know, send it to me, I can follow it up. Um, I am an ally of the LGBT community and I will continue fighting in all the spaces. That mm -hmm. Nicely, from thank all of so us here, yeah, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. For many South Africans and LGBTQIA people, safety, justice and the promise for a free country just seems light years away. It is our government's, our responsibility to create more awareness campaigns. We need to implement more prevention strategies, create infrastructures that allow us to be taken seriously. We need to have conversations, dialogue needs to be had, and ultimately a law needs to be put in place that protects its citizens in real life in the same way that it theoretically does on paper.